Hi, just here. And in this video, I would like to walk you through the structure and the copy of a page, a sales page I uh, wrote for an online course some time ago. Um, they are launching this for the second time this week and I got an email about that and I was like, yeah, actually that was a cool page. Let's talk about it. I would like to show you how simple it is actually to structure an effective sales page for an online course and maybe give you a couple of tips regarding the exact words you are going to use to fill your structure with, namely the copy. But before we dive into this, I would like to say a couple of words about the audience, who are we targeting and so on and so forth. A couple of things that uh, we keep in mind while we keep going through the page. So the target audience for this course are online teachers who are fed up with giving one on one Skype lessons. Their schedules are full. They are charging. They can't charge a lot because of the saturated market. They are controlled by their schedules and they're bloody tired. They would like to move away from this, start selling digital products, some start selling some packages or packaged services, and they would like to use Instagram to do that. And the problems they are struggling with are twofold with respect to Instagram. We have people who have an account, but they are hesitant to post because uh, they maybe they are generally speaking not very keen on social media. It's the very first uh, time they joined Instagram. They have no experience. They're a bit afraid to put anything out there. And we have people who have been posting, but they see no results. And uh, from uh, the discovery session we had, I know that it's because they've been following generic advice from the blog post, which usually are not suitable for language teachers. What do they want from this course? Generally speaking, at the end, right? Or like once they start implementing the tips the course gives cons um, consistently, they would like to sell their offers through Instagram, meaning converting, uh, getting, um, building engaged following, building their personal brands and converting the followers into the paying customers. But they have reservations. Everybody has reservations, obviously. And this is super important to know what kind of reservations your audience has. A part of the two very typical reservations you will always have for an online course being the price and the time it takes place, um, which you can't do much about. Uh, how you decide on the price is up to you. At the time you decided to hold your course, if it's not on demand course, but something uh, that's taking place live, you will always have people who will be like, yeah, okay, that's too expensive. I, I can't um, do it in these weeks. I'm away, whatever. But we have some reservations that we can address and we should address. Uh, namely, um, the target audience is skeptical about social media, especially those who try doing it. They are like, okay, I've tried everything. I, you know, implemented all the tips I found online. It does not work. Why should I trust you? I do not think that selling on social media works. You may also even find articles that uh, say that, you know, social media selling for small businesses is just a waste of time. Another reservation is just uh, that this will take too long. They maybe need money now. Maybe they need, uh, they are looking for some quick solution. Um, about this reservation, we can only partially take care of. I will show you how we did it in the copy. But um, we need to be aware of everything uh, that, you know, our prospects may be thinking to themselves because not addressing those reservations does not make them go away. And it's always better for you if we, you address reservations, even if you, if you cannot fully combat them, but just, you know, to put it out there. And last but not least, but very valid reservations, those uh, reservations, those people, especially those who do not have Instagram account, who are not active on social media, who are not used to uh, talking about their offers in public like that, who have been, have been getting clients through word of mouth. Um, they are thinking that selling is a key or that, you know, talking about my offer in such an open way, it's something sleazy. Um, and last but not least that we need to keep in mind is um, what kind of audience in terms of awareness we're writing for. Um, well, first of all, they're problem aware. They know they have this problem, right? They uh, try selling through Instagram. It's not working or they would like to sell uh, through Instagram but they don't know how, so they know about their problems. They do not know that a solution like this exists, so they're not specifically looking for a course uh, that will teach uh, them this. And this course will be marketed to a warm audience. Uh, there are three instructors on the course and they all will send those uh, this uh, course and market the course to their email subscribers. So we're dealing with people who already know, like and trust Elena is, I think, the front run of this course and um, the, the creator, actually, of this course. So there are two more instructors, so they will be marketing to their email list. 
Okay, now we have everything um, for me to be able to effectively walk you through the page. Let's dive right in. So this is the page and it starts very clearly, in a very clear way. It says what it is. Instagram for language teachers tells you what the main benefit will be, so why you should care about this. Learn how to use Instagram to build your brand and find new clients. And it tells you the things that can be also something like a deal breaker, that it's an online course and it has particular time. So it's like a live course. Meaning if you're not a language teacher, if you're not interested in Instagram, if you're not available during this time, just leave this page. We are trying, what we are trying to do is um, to uh, structure the page in a way that we get rid of people who are not a good fit as soon as possible. So we are not trying to lure anybody. We are not starting to talk about this Instagram course from the uh, Jurassic period, you know, and then luring people into something they may not need at all. We are being very specific, very upfront, and we're saying, okay, these are the things um, that you must know now. And we have an enroll now button. Obviously, uh, if you somebody is looking at it for the very first time, they're not gonna enroll now. They're gonna proceed reading. But the thing is, how do we view pages about online courses? We look at a page, we may not be uh, completely convinced. We go and we think about it. But then if we decide that it's a good idea or we decide to look at the page again, um, we're like, okay, I actually want to enroll now. I got a couple of marketing emails where Elena told me more about it. I want to enroll now. So I do not want to read the page again. Here's the button. You can do it right away. So this is for the visitors who are returning to the page, right? Not for the very first time visitors. But it's, I mean, it's not uh, super necessary to have this button here, but because of our structure, our very first button after this comes really low down. So we're just offering people a shortcut to just enroll now. This is very interesting, uh, patting myself. I mean, I may be biased, right? But I found it interesting, this, this uh, approach. We are not starting to toot the course in the sense of learn this and that. I mean, you see that the subhead is not something learn this huge thing or learn from the best in the industry. It's, it's this, this subhead addresses main reservation that we thought would prevent people from signing up the main reservation. Sure, they had many reservations, but I think we thought that the main reservation would be that they just don't believe uh, Instagram can help themselves. And we just putting it out there, we're saying it out loud. Yes, it can help yourself, but not when you're using it wrong or not when you don't know how to do it, for example. So we catch their attention. When they, you know, when somebody reads them, it's like, no, I don't know, does Instagram work at all? And we're saying, yes, it works. So we're just, just really clearly saying, yes, it works. You may think it doesn't, but yes, it works. Listen to us. We will tell you how it works. And then we start talking about their problems. Because if you start talking about yourself, start to tooting your benefits without indicating that you understand what people are going through, they are not going to listen or not many will listen. You first need to establish a connection and rapport and show them, I understand what you're going through. So this is what this section is about. Um, this is the, we uh, outline the problems that we think people are going through. And then we make a transition to this main point we announced in the subheader. Maybe selling on social media doesn't work at all. And then we say, oh yes, it does. But not by very specific way you've been doing it. And this is, this is what we promise you that we will give you a solution, a thought through strategy, blah, 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 blah. So this is the promise of the solution. In a nutshell, it's like, are you struggling with these problems? Do you really, do you have this big reservation? You shouldn't have, because we uh, have a solution for you. And this is like, again, this is generic promise, not generic, but general promise of a solution. And now we need to get into specifics. The next section, especially, I like these graphics. I also mocked up this page. They changed the design this year, but uh, the, main, the main elements that were uh, strategically placed are still there. I wanted to have this graphic that shows the process that you have. First, you have Instagram followers, then you get them to subscribe, then you get them to participate in free events, and then you get new students and clients. As you can see, it's not like, okay, you get followers on Instagram and you start immediately selling to them. Because this probably would be not trustworthy, not to mention impossible. People already tried doing that. And when they see this graphic, they're like, okay, I did not try this approach. Let's, you know, see what they have to say. So we kind of already revealing the approach altogether. We made this promise and then we just very quickly showed them what this approach is about. They're like, okay, 
Also, it kind of implicitly takes care of reservation that selling is icky. Look, we're first just getting email subscribers. We are not selling to people right away. We are not ringing their bell, uh, you know, not knowing uh, who they are. They don't know who we are. We are not, you know, shuffling anything down their throats. We are warming them up gradually. So this graphic is there for that purpose to, to tell them that it won't be some kind of a cold direct selling. Then we say, you want this big benefit? Join this course. And then we tell them the main benefits. What will they learn? How to find ideal clients, how to take memorable pictures. And here we go in specifics, especially for people who already tried using Instagram. This would be very um, valuable in the sense of, okay, I tried finding ideal clients, I failed. I tried using the stories, I failed, but they will teach me. I tried to write engaging captions, I failed. I tried using hashtags, didn't work, but they will teach you, we will teach you. And then we're saying, and the best part, you won't be doing it alone. alone. And why it's the best part? We explain it because you need um, a momentum. When you're just starting on Instagram or when you're pivoting, you're changing your strategy, it would, it's great when you have people, you know, like your own community who will cheer you, uh, cheer for you, who will, you know, like your post, who will promote your post, who will, you know, give you feedback. And it's like much more effective than doing it alone, right? And then we go, of course, okay, we talked uh, about what it is, for whom, what the benefit, but the question is, okay, uh, who are these people who are going to teach me that? We need some kind of, it's now something about trust. And talking about instructors also evokes trust because it shows you, okay, these are these people, they are also online teachers, former online teachers. They've been at, uh, in your spot, but they figured out how to use Instagram uh, to you know, uh, grow their business and to move away from Skype lessons and they can teach you that as well. And uh, here I like this heading, a language teacher, a business coach and a graphic designer. So not just meet your instructors and okay, go figure who that is, so much text over here. Um, it tells you that you will have somebody who understands your problems as a language teacher, a business coach who knows how to grow your business and a graphic designer you need uh, tips from because Instagram is a visual platform. And then we have uh, some text snippets about the coaches. It's uh, for, uh, although it's for the warm audience, but they are like three different audience. Uh, Elfin has audience, an audience, Elena and Veronica. Maybe they don't know each other. The audiences, I mean, they don't know their coaches. So we need a, a bit more, informa more information on each. And we try to uh, give the information in a way that it shows why they qualify to teach you. Why should you listen to them? Uh, so it's about uh, how, uh, what kind of Instagram accounts they have, that Elfin um, spoke even at the Women Language Conference on how to use Instagram. So she's like really experienced in Instagram usage and she's experienced uh, business coach and she's experienced graphic designer and a teacher as well. She teaches uh, people how to uh, use, um, how to actually uh, de uh, do your own pictures without being a graphic designer. And once we establish that, we establish trust, we uh, people are ready to hear what uh, is inside the course specifically. I see uh, many pages, sales pages, online courses that they start with this. This is what you get. Pre-recorded presentation and workbooks. Nobody cares about that unless they understand why they need it. You know, pre-recorded presentation is nothing special. Weekly workbook is nothing special unless you tell me what kind of benefits I will be getting. Who will be my teachers? Why should I listen to you? Um, I really like how this uh, subhead starts with P, proven strategies, practical assignments, personal feedback. It's again a summary. What we are doing here, yes, it's a long page, but you are spending your hard earned money and uh, you would like all the questions answered, all reservations taken care of before you spend those, this, uh, the money. It's, um, the sections are um, clearly marked. They have white space, so you can easily also scroll. You don't even need to uh, kind of read this. I mean, some people won't even read uh, this text specifically, but what we need to make sure uh, that even who scrolls, even people who scroll, they should get an idea what's inside. I challenge you to read just the subheads. You will get the main idea. You will get uh, some 80% of the value you get from the subheads. So you have proof strategy, you have practical assignments, and you have personal feedback. Wonderful, right? And now it's kind of, it says, okay, what exactly is inside? That you have live Q&A session, personal feedback, supportive community, bonus. If you don't have a bonus, that's not a problem. They decided to include uh, a bonus 
good it's it should be included uh probably where you already talk about your deliver not deliverables what's the name um assets right and then we have a testimonial from somebody who uh, took uh, the course um testimonials are super important uh don't be afraid to make them long be afraid to make them visual visually monotonous uh, if you have a longer testimonial, which is advisable for a course, if you just have a testimonial, oh, loved it, and that's it. And, you know, it's not helpful. What exactly did you love? Who are you at all? I mean, what problems were you struggling with? And this is a, a really, uh, I like this testimonial because it tells you what the person gained, wider reach, double engagement, and stronger confidence. It's something that the prospects of this course really want to get. And then she's described, uh, describing what she was struggling with, that she had an Instagram account for half a year, but couldn't figure out uh, herself how to do this, how to uh, utilize it better, use it better. And uh, uh, this, I think this testimonial, uh, sorry, this testimonial does not come from the course. It still comes from the very first time they were launching it where they didn't have testimonials. But Veronica and Dalian already hold, held a workshop about this uh, process that you, they are using here, this strategy. And she describes what uh, exactly happened, that uh, she worked with Elena and Veronica, two coaches we have, and then she again specifically describes the results she achieved. So this is how an effective testimonial should be structured, what I was struggling with, what exactly happened, uh, I took the course, I worked with that person, blah, 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 and what results I achieved. Then we get to the weekly program. Again, this should come only after you tackle everything else we just tackled before. This is only for people who indeed are considering doing it. And then you really need to see that you design it in a non-boring way, also scannable. Okay, first week strategy, second week branding and design, third week storytelling. So you have um, subheads that say something. Don't use, uh, use subheads that are totally cryptical, like if you say you say you have a copywriting course, magic, uh, copywriting magic, or uh, I don't know, social media magic, something that is like doesn't make any sense. You should use subheads that mean something to your prospects in this context, something they need to learn. They want to learn strategy. They want to learn how to do branding and design and so on and so forth. What I really like, this is so cool. Not my idea, unfortunately, <laughs> but I look at it. It's like, wow, that is so good. Because usually what you see on online courses is like, it's just give you the dates, right? But this is so nice when you present it like this visually. It's much easier to understand, you know, how long it will take. It kind of takes a month a bit more than a month, you see. And you also see, okay, that you have three uh, meetings that are taking place live. This is really cool. Uh, and then we have our first CTA. Um, they are having, I think, uh, this is, I don't know how many spots are, I forgot. But uh, they have right now, as for today, 23 spots left. Um, ah, now I remember, 30, because we said 29 teachers. Um, and they... Wasn't there a counter? Oh, the counter was the law. Actually, there's supposed to be a counter as well. Or, I mean, it's optional. You don't have to do it. But it's good to say the enrollment is closes in one day, 20 hours, whatever. So people know uh, this is not going to stay like this uh, forever. They can't just come next week and decide. So this is important. Um, then some people may be ready to enroll now. Some people may be so like, yeah, this is totally in my budget. I really would like to learn this. I trust these people. I can enroll now. For those who still have reservations we did not address, um, we um, put these reservations here. Very important thing about this section. You can also call it an FAQ section, but maybe writing FAQ is not um, very, how should I say, it's a bit bland. If you can find a different title for this, you probably should do that. Have more questions, we have the answers because people may be thinking, I have more questions. And then we use questions they, that didn't make it into the main copy because we, of course, tried addressing main questions in the copy as well. It doesn't mean that you should just, you know, outsource all the questions to the FAQ section. Um, and for example, things that qualify uh, to be in the section, who deserve, deserve to be in the section, are something like what do I need to participate, how much time it takes, what if my audience isn't on Instagram, uh, and something super specific. It cannot be that you here would be a question who is this course for? 
you cannot put a question called who is the scores for in the FAQ question because it's something super fundamental. If, if 80 to 90% of your uh, course prospects are asking themselves this question, it does not belong in the FAQ section. Here are the questions that are asked by, I don't know, 20%, maybe, maybe even less. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. It's just like a random figure, but nothing that the majority of your prospects ask themselves should be in this section, right? And, and this is, again, you, I mean, you right now are looking at this page like, man, this is so long, but that's the thing. You probably are not the target audience or not all of you are, are um, the members of target audience. But once you are really considering spending your money, uh, you would, and you have still questions that are not answered. You will quickly scroll to the section and see if there is a question you, uh, you know, you still need answering. Um, the the main challenge here is the design and structure in the sense of that you need to design and structure your page in a non-overwhelming way, in super clear way where to find what. So people do not need to read every letter to find the information they need. This is important for long pages, for any page actually, but for long pages especially. And then we have a testimonial and a summary that just, you know, uh, um, once again doubles down on, okay, what the main benefit you will get. And then, okay, you uh, can keep trying to figure it out on your own. Uh, you maybe will figure it out or not, or you can just join this course and figure it out for sure. So it kind of gives you like this security or a certainty. Okay, I can keep, I can stop struggling with this, right? And again, we have uh, the uh, CTA. This is the counter I meant. Probably I should tell Elena to uh, maybe add the counter as well because I think counter is important. As you can see, if, if we only see this, people may think, oh, okay, I can come to this next week. And they do not know. Of course, we told them that it takes place you know, within a month, but they may have forgotten about it or they don't know that enrollment closes on Thursday, I think, and not on Friday or not next week. So um, last but not least, what I would like to show you is the page narrative. Uh, page narrative in the sense of um, if we reduce each section to its message in a nutshell, what kind of conversation will we get? So this is how our page goes. So this is what it is, for whom and how it helps, helps and when it takes place. If you are okay with this, enroll now. If not, keep reading. We know that you are skeptical about this and it's okay that you are. We know your problems and we have a solution. Want to solve this main problem? Join our course to get these specific benefits. These are the teachers that you can trust that will be teaching you how to do it. And here's what inside the course. Then why you should trust this course testimonial, timetable, first call to action, but hurry up, admission closes soon. Have more questions, we have the answers. Here's why you should trust us. Summary, my benefits, CDA. So um, I think this is a good idea to do this before you start writing the page. I, always, I also do it um, uh, to some extent, maybe not that eloquent. Uh, this I just did after I, um, now when I was looking at the page, but I think I also did it before to have a page outline, you know, to say, okay, this section will speak about this, this section will talk about this. Um, this is important to catch any logical inconsistencies because uh, I saw pages that does, do not tell people what it is. They don't, the, the pages that even don't say if it's an online course, an ebook, or I don't know what, what else, there, <laughs> an option. So you, you literally don't know what that is. Or that they start with weekly schedule and you're like, I don't even know what benefits I'm getting. So, um, before you start writing the page, do this. You can be, I mean, very brief, not even like complete sentences. And after you wrote the page, do this as well, because during the process, you may toss thing around, things around, you may move something, you know. Um, so after you wrote the page that you're sure that your structure still makes sense. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Um, I will be posting this on YouTube, I guess, right? And, and sending it to all my email subscribers. If you see this video either in the blog post on YouTube, please leave me a comment just to say if this is valuable to you, because then if it is, I may shoot more videos like that.